So dear friends, thank you for coming. So now we open the press conference of ceasefire now in Ukraine. And I will introduce you Wada Har uh, Professor Emeritus Wada Haruki. Professor Emeritus Isezaki Kenji. Professor Emeritus Haba Kumiko. And president, former president of Iwanami Publishers, Okamoto Atsushi. And citizen activist Suzuki Kunio. So please introduce about this movement. Professor Emeritus Wataharuki, please. <coughs> uh, uh, thank you for coming uh, to, to our press conference. Uh, uh, we issued uh, a, state, a statement of 31 citizens intellectuals uh, on the occasion of G7 Hiroshima summit uh, on April 5th of this year. Uh, our main, main catchphrase is uh, ceasefire now in Ukraine and no war in our region. We are uh, uh, determined to, to, to publish this statement uh, in the form of opinion advertisement in newspaper. So we appealed for a donation uh, to our uh, people. And uh, uh, now we uh, got enough money to publish the, uh, our statement uh, in the form of opinion advertisement on in Tokyo Shimbun in, in on the next day and in uh, Japan Times uh, on May 19th uh, when the G7 summit will open. Uh, so I now lead our statement. Uh, uh, <clears throat> declaration of Japanese citizens to the G7 leaders gathered at Hiroshima in May 2023. We Japan resident citizens and intellectuals are desirous of peace. War has been going on in Ukraine already for one year. This war began with Russian attack on Ukraine. Ukraine aroused its people into all out resistance war but the war already shows signs of being a proxy war with outcomes determined by weapons provided by the NATO, uh, NATO countries. Countless Ukrainian towns and villages have been destroyed and appalling numbers of Ukrainian people have died. At the same time, more and more Russian soldiers are also dying. If the war continues, any longer, its effects will spread to other parts of the globe. For example, the exclusion of Russia caused by this war will result in the loss of coordination of international interest in the Arctic, in the Arctic, where Russia is the largest coastal state. The melting of Arctic, Arctic ice and the further escalation of global warming the lives and the destinies of many, especially those already vulnerable before the outbreak of the war, will become increasingly precarious. The threat of nuclear weapons and further combat over nuclear power plants is becoming increasingly real. 
fighting must cease immediately. One year and 15 days after the start of the Korean War in June 1950, formal ceasefire talks began on the American proposal and with the agreement of the Soviet Union, which was supporting one of the belligerent states. In the Ukrainian War, formal ceasefire talks began five days after it began. Roughly a month later, when Ukrainian terms of ceasefire were proposed, Russian forces withdrew from the Kyiv front. However, ceasefire talks, including realistic settlement terms, collapsed at the beginning of April and full-scale war resumed. Since then, cruel warfare has continued, has continued. Now, with a year of having already passed, Russia and Ukraine should learn from the Korean War and reopen discussions toward immediately ceasefire. We demand ceasefire now. Fortunately, in this war, through the mediation of parties, including the US, U UN, and the Turkey, a partial ceasefire has been imp implemented concerning a grain exports and nuclear power plants. A humanitarian corridor also functions. These steps can become signposts toward the full ceasefire. The Chinese proposal for ceasefire is also a good sign and civic movement calling for ceasefire have also become active. G7 countries should not be supplying even more weapons, but should instead set up a negotiation, negotiating table. Neutral countries of the global south, especially China and India, should play the role of the negotiation arbiters. The expansion of the Ukrainian war beyond e Europe must be stopped at all costs. <coughs> we will preserve the peace of Northeast Asia and uh, we strongly resolve the peace, maintain that the seas of the Japan East Sea not become a sea of war, that there be no war between US and North Korea, and that there be no war between the United States and China over Taiwan. We demand no war in our region. In August 1945, Japan surrendered to the Allies. United States, United Kingdom, China, and Soviet Union put an end to the history of 50 years as a warring state and was reborn a peace state. The new constitution of 1946 included Article 9, forever rejecting the threat of or use of force to resolve the international disputes. Japan recognized that the, uh, recognized the independence of Korea and returned Taiwan and Manchuria to China. Then it placed never again to war with Korea, North and so South, China, or Taiwan. We Japan resident citizens will not take part in any war on the sea of Japan, East Sea. We will not take part in any war over Taiwan. We will not go to war at all. We call for Japan to respond to the wishes of the G7 by calling for a ceasefire in Ukraine and alongside China and India becoming an arbiter of negotiations for ceasefire, uh, April 5th, 2023. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and we started crowdfunding just on the same day before former former press conference, uh, April fifth, and then 
the result of our crowdfunding is we will get uh, three million forty uh, four hundred eighty one thousand nineteen twenty. So the indicated number is four million three hundred fifty two. Uh, 52,400 yen, but minus uh, for using tax, kind of, for crowdfunding, it goes 3,481,088 yen. So it's above 164% beyond our target, first target. Our first target was to million six thousand forty thousand yen. So the number of supporters is three hundred forty three. And finally, so after the closing of this crowdfunding, more people funded, so it's uh, all Total 361 people supported about this project. So then tomorrow on Tokyo Shimbun, so we'll publish that advertisement, opinion advertisement. So full page. And then uh, one more on 19, in the morning of 19th of May, just the day before the opening day of G7 summit on Japan Times. And Japan Times is, uh, is kind of public newspaper. So it's sure. going to the hotel, so this one, hmm. all in uh, English. Sure, sure. And this is a logo. Logo is in the center. This is Japanese Imakosote Senwo. And then ceasefire now. So dear G7 leaders, Japanese citizens, for ceasefire now in Ukraine. So this is the newspaper on 19th, on Japan Times. And the numbers of the people of signed on this movement is 7,454 people. So now we are going to give it to embassy of these G7 countries. Okay. So thank you. So the next speech is Kenji, uh, Isezaki Kenji, please. Okay. Um, yesterday night, um, I was uh, called uh, by BS Fuji Prime News, uh, two hours news talk show, uh, devoted only this theme, ceasefire in the Ukraine, and um, and our appeal today we are present uh, we are presenting. Okay. Uh, it's a very remarkable thing because nowadays, at last, okay, major media is uh, picking up the ceasefire issue, and the ceasefire as a terminology become sort of very popular among the media. Okay, that is one of the progress we made. I think I'm very happy with that. And please watch uh, the homepage of Said. Uh, news show uh, will be you know short version of discussion is available. I think from today, I think a <laughs> <laughs> core uh, speaker of mine is one of them is was uh, Professor Iwo Kibe, uh, former president of Defense College in Japanese uh, Defense Ministry. Okay. He made even very constructive suggestion to our peer. Mm -hmm. our so I think uh, tune or tone, 
okay, or surrounding ceasefire okay, is really being progressively changing. Okay. So let me begin <coughs> my speech today. Okay. I am aware that there has been various criticism, very strong one, to our appeal for immediate ceasefire. <coughs> one of them is why the G7 shouldn't Russia be the one to say the ceasefire? Yeah. Yes, this is perfectly understandable criticism. That is why association of concerned historians, I repeat, associations of concerned historians, which include most of the members of today acted last July, last July. A total of 100 intellectuals, not only Japanese, but also South Koreans, South Koreans who know more than anybody the pain of the prolonged ceasefire in an inconclusive war. Okay. I'm talking about the Korean Peninsula. On the premise of denouncing Russia's aggression, I repeat, on the premise of denouncing Russia's aggression, we sent a statement to UN Secretary General requesting the mediation of dialogue for the ceasefire. UN should commit the order. This appeal was automatically addressed to Russia at that time, because Russia is a permanent member of UN Security Council. I read one passage from that statement last year. Okay. Needless to say, a ceasefire is not a peace settlement. For that, the country is concerned, have to lay down their weapon. A demilitarized zone, buffer zone, has to be agreed between them, and the slaughter and destruction to be stopped. After the UN and global society first obtain such a ceasefire situation, then consultation, negotiation can begin toward formal settlement of the peace. In this point, it will be necessary for the UN and the international society to stand between two parties to work out for fair condition for the peace. Okay. An international observer's team group will presumably be necessary to maintain such a ceasefire. And this is the end of the quote. Okay. I continue. The United Nations Security Council has been criticized, as all you are aware, for being dysfunctional due to the power of a veto. But from the experience of its predecessor, the League of Nations, the veto power should be considered in different angles, such as, as a mechanism preventing the withdrawal of major countries from the League that might cause another world war. The United Nations is the only mechanism for dialogue among nuclear armed and permanent members of the Security Council, including Russia and China, only venue we have. Okay? Therefore, joint statement by Japan and South Korea last year was intended to reawaken the UN of its function. Ten months have already passed since this statement. Very sorry. The ceasefire for the humanitarian corridor and the ceasefire for nuclear power plant and several attempts have been made already brokered by UN or UN bodies such as IAEA. Intermediaries by third countries have also been explored, namely by Turkey and others. 
immediately after the break, outbreak of this war, a ceasefire was sought at the initiative of a very primary party, that is Russia and Ukraine. Okay? In that sense, from the point of view of practitioner of ceasefire negotiation, which I am, this war in the Ukraine, Ukraine should be viewed as an extension of Donbass war. Donbass war. I think yesterday the TV show in the TV uh, in the BS Fuji, other two speaker which considered to be more conservative side in the Japanese political circle, or both of them fully agreed about this notion. This uh, this war is extension of Donbass war. Okay, in which. Donbass war in which Minsk agreement and other trial and error have already been made for ceasefire. Therefore, it cannot be said that ceasefire is premature now. No. Party to the war have lessened land from Donbass war already. Therefore, we should rather use the term of resumption of dialogue rather than, rather than ceasefire. Resumption of dialogue, okay? Without missing opportunities when the war situation, battle situation become large scale stalemate. And now, battle situation is literally stalemate as symbolized by the Battle of Bahamut. And now, G7 leaders are gathering in Japan. There is only one reason why we dare to address our appeal specifically to G7 leaders, which does not include Russia. That is because this war in Ukraine is a proxy war of G7, especially United States. The essence of this war in Ukraine is a proxy war. I repeat again, proxy war. No matter how voluntarily the parties, especially in Ukraine, are risking their life to fight for their homeland, as long as there is an external quote unquote lord who want to defeat her enemy without fighting in the battle by herself, but supporting to that party militarily, that is nothing but proxy war. Once upon a time, during a Cold War, a socialist government was born in Afghanistan. However, political situation became unstable and plunged into the civil war. Then in 1979, as you know, in order to help the socialist government and request of it, on the request of it, Soviet Union at that time invaded, invaded <coughs> Afghanistan under the guise of right of collective self-defense as per Article 51 of United Nations Charter. Against the mighty red invader, Soviet Union, the overwhelmingly weak and lightly armed Afghan Mujahideen fought desperately for their own homeland. Forced into an overwhelmingly unfavorable losing battle to the Mujahideen side, it was a state of the art portable missile provided by United States that became a game changer midway through. Please watch Hollywood movie of Ch uh, titled Charlie Wilson's War. That offensive is reversed and the warlords Mujahideen took 10 years to defeat Soviet Union. In the current Ukraine war, Russia invaded under the context of same collective self-defense in order to protect the right to self-determination of 
pro-Russian resident in eastern Ukraine. The weapon provided by United States and NATO became the game changer that determines today's war theater in favor of Ukraine. Afghan war in the Cold War era is academically positioned without any dispute as a typical proxy war. Then why not current Ukraine war? This is my point. There is an opinion dominating media today. This war is unilateral war of Russian invasion and Ukraine is only fighting for self-defense, not as a proxy. And calling it a proxy war is an insult to the, their Ukraine's loyalty to their homeland. But it was the same for Afghan Mujahideen at that time. They also risked their lives for their homeland and fought, fought an asymmetric self-defense war that is incomparative to today's Ukraine. Are you saying that people with colored skin are less loyal to their homeland than those without? In the spirit of resisting against invaders, are whites more precious than people of the color? If so, denying proxiness in today's Ukraine war is nothing but racism in the academic term. For above reasons, I believe that concealing G7's direct liability in the Ukraine war by denying the proxiness proxy war aspect of this war is extremely misleading and malicious and arbitrary act of politics. In the name of precious lives of Ukrainian, Ukrainian people that are lost their life at this very moment. Back to Afghanistan. After the Soviet defeat, Union defeat in Afghanistan, the Soviet Union itself collapsed. And this classic American proxy war turned out to be a success for US. However, even if it was a success, how much human life was sacrificed and destroyed in 10 years of Afghan war? Are you going to make such a sacrifice to Ukraine as well? What are we, including Japan, G7, who forced such a sacrifice to the people of Ukraine while we are sitting in comfort zone? That is our appeal to the leaders of G7. Furthermore, weapons provided in proxy war reproduce wars. The Mujahideen, who are military backed by the United States at that time, after that, after the, 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 their victory, they plunged into power struggle and went to the civil war, and bringing more destruction and carnage than the war against Soviet Union. Among the Mujahideen were Murat Omar, who later became founder of Taliban, and Osama bin Laden, a Saudi who were not Afghan, but who but led volunteers from abroad. These US-backed men turned against US later and did 9-11 in 2001 and dragged US and NATO into 20 years war, the longest war in the history of the United States of America. As a part of America's occupation policy during this time, I 
Kenji Suzaki <laughs> took responsibility as a representative of Japanese government to disarm those Mujahideen, and that weapon I collected from them are from the war on Soviet Union during Cold War. And as you know now, in August 2021, US-NATO, the mightiest military alliance on the earth, was completely defeated by Taliban. I repeat, weapons provided in proxy war reproduce wars. At last, I talk about what signify Hiroshima, Hiroshima, where the G7 leaders are gathering now. US NATO often speaks about so-called will of the people of Ukraine to fight, to defend, in order to justify their military support to Ukraine. There is opinion that victims of this war are Ukraine people, but it is their wholehearted will or consensus to sacrifice. I question what exactly is this national consensus, so-called. I don't want fight, even if it means compromise. I don't want any more I want a peace. Who can say there is no such a voice at all? Ukraine Pravda, the major newspaper in Ukraine, just published an article uh, last week, last week about national opinion poll in Ukraine. The people, the percentage of the people, only seven, seven, not, we should not, I should not say only, 70% of the people in Ukraine says there was no compromise against with invaders, 70%. So how about other 30%? Okay. Anyway, even one thinks so, we need peace. He or she cannot say it out loud at this moment due to so-called wartime frenzy. Wartime frenzy. Because Japanese people is the one who have experienced this wartime frenzy in the past, so we are, I'm asking ourselves, myself, shouldn't we empathize with it, what is going on now in, the, in the Ukraine, and appeal? How such frenzy of the peer pressure to win in the wartime frenzy has led us to the end in the past. We want to appeal these things to the G7 leaders who are gathering in the Hiroshima. Hiroshima is a symbol of that end. Thank you very much. And I may have to excuse after, after, after uh, Hava Sensei's talk because I have another commitment. Sorry. Okay. Thank hey. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kenji. You said you Ken. Please, on oh mic, please. So, <laughs> what does he say? So please, uh, in, in short, explain your, your speech in Japanese. In Japanese? For our work. Japanese. <laughs> ja <laughs> very short digest in Japanese, yeah. please. あの、えっと、昨日の 
特に国際法の立場から言うともう武器を供与するっていう立場ってこれはもう戦争の当事者なんですね。これねねだからこの、このあたかもこれはなんかあの離れたところで、えー、とロシアとウクライ,ウクライナが戦,戦っているとそれを傍観する立場頑張れとかそういう傍観の立場は許されない特に G7 は武器を供与しているわけですからその武器が今日の戦況を左右しているわけですからその意味でこれは代理戦争だと僕は言っているわけです。これは全然ウクライナのの人たちのこの今あの国家に対する祖国に対する愛であるとか誇りであるとかそういうものを汚すこれは茶化すものでは絶対ない絶対ないこれは極めて性的なあの、ね、あの観点から観点か冷静な観点からこれはこの,あの戦争を大きな目で見なきゃいけないというその立場で言ってるだけの話なわけですよねだから G7 の人たちはもうこれは当事者であると、ね、でこの、えー、と武器の,あのあこれ我々のス,ペース,、えー、とステートメントの中であの武器を供与するんじゃなくてとにかく対話の場を作れっていうのねこれ額面通り、えー、これを理解されるこれ、ね、対象が聞いちゃうとじゃあウクライナの人どうなっちゃうのって武器の,教師、えー、あの共,共有を止められたらかわいそうすぎる僕もそう思います。僕もそう思いますなぜ我々が武器の支援ではなく対話の場をとこの G7 で言いたいのかってその理由というのは理由というのはこれはあの羽場先生の,あのえとスピーチの中でえこの実際にどうやって停戦ライン停戦僕らはバッファーゾーンと言いますよねそれが引かれるプロセスをあの詳細されると思うんですけれども僕はあのえとあの実務家としてこれえちょっと申し上げますね。あの実効性を確定することが停戦ではないんです。逆に曖昧にするんです。一番わかりやすいのは概念的ですけれども、帯を作るんです。か、それがもし例えば今あの激戦区になっているバフムートという都市かもしれない。都市かもしれない。もしくは原発。これ原発が問題になってます。戦場になってるね。あのザポリージャ、対岸を含んでいっぱいねこう都市かもしれない。都市かもしれない。そこをバッファーゾーンにするんです。とといいううことはそこから兵を引けというわけわですロロシア側特にロシアにですね,ねロシアに兵を引けというわけです、ね、そのカードとして使いなさいということなんですつまり西側が西側があの、えー、武器を供与を止めるからロシアは引けとバッファーゾーンから出てけと、ね、それが停戦なんですでそこにインターナショナルオブザーバーをあの置いてななるべく大きな存在でそしてまた銃を取ってあの交戦が始まる始まらない安全保障をする安全をセキュリティギャランターになる国際社会がそれが停戦の概念なんですねだから武器の供与を止めろというのは、ね、学面通りにとってはこれはウクライナの人たちがかわいそうすぎますそれはでもそうではなくてこの停戦のためにバッファーゾーンを作るそこには不可視的にロシアが引かなきゃいけないわけ、ね、そのカードとして使いなさいということなんですね。はい、よろしいでしょうか。プロフェッサー・ミテス・イセザキ・ケンジ、Now explained in Japanese for、uh, gathered Japanese、uh, press about proxy war, a basic information about proxy war and ceasefire line, not Not lying, buffer zone, and not just not saying just stop weapons supply, but buffer zone. So he explained shortly.、Right. Then next, Professor Mitas Habakumiko, please. Thank you very much,、uh, Chair Mike t a s a n and thank you very much for coming here,、uh, press、uh, people. Um, this is Komiko Haba, president of the Asia Pacific Society of International Studies Association, and Professor Emeritus of Aoyama Gakuin University, a visiting researcher of Waseda University as well.、Um, uh, I also uh, invited uh, Asahi、uh, Namaterebi <laughs> in,、um, at 29 April. <laughs> 
uh, of uh, uh, Soichiro Tara and uh, uh, with uh, Satsuki Katayama, uh, LEP Deputy Chair of uh, <coughs> General Affairs, and Toshiro Morimoto, uh, who is a past uh, military uh, Ministry of Defense. Um, three years discussion, uh, after the three years discussion, uh, at last audiences uh, anchored uh, uh, toward the ceasefire, and it was very interesting. Um, uh, the audience uh, accepted uh, ceasefire is almost 61%, and against ceasefire is 39%. Before that, I thought completely uh, reverse. So the, um, against seeds are higher, it's almost 90% and so on. But uh, that's why we are very happy if we uh, discussion uh, in a television or mass media or others, uh, people also change after hearing about the discussion. So that's why we are we, we believing that uh, such a uh, press meeting or uh, something like a discussion in a citizen uh, meeting is very, very important to know how to make peace and uh, prosperity. I'd like to start my uh, request. It is very short, <laughs> shorter than, uh, much shorter than Isezaki. Uh, I'd like to concentrate on uh, ceasefire and uh, request for G7 Hiroshima summit. As a second generation of Hibakusha, atomic bomb victim in Hiroshima, okay, thank you very much. I'd like to demand an uh, immediate ceasefire at the summit of Hiroshima, a, a summit in Hiroshima. The last World War II, the Battle of Okinawa and the dropping of atomic bomb of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were among the greatest tragedy caused by the delay of the ceasefire. So uh, in order to avoid further casualties in the Russo-Ukrainian war, we hope for the ceasefire and solution through uh, diplomatic di dialogues, uh, which uh, Professor Isezak said. I'd like to make four suggestions. First, a ceasefire is uh, neither defeat nor victory. A truce is literally a cessation of war, Negotiations start there before deciding whether to win or lose. We must first end uh, the estimated 200,000 deaths in uh, Ukraine and Russia and save the hundreds of lives that will die every day. I'd like to the, I'd like uh, to the G7 to appeal for the ceasefire at the Hiroshima summit to make buffer zone and introduce UN PKO by neutral uh, parties until now, for example, Turkey, China, India, ASEAN, and other global South country, I think. The second point is uh, uh, reporting of various facts of both sides is necessary, especially in time of, uh, times of war. There is a danger of glorification of the uh, necessary, uh, sorry, glorification war if it is, uh, became a one side report in wartime especially in Japan, it is very such a uh, situation. Even in the United States or Canada, I visited during these times, there is a free discussion. Uh, so someone uh, support Biden, Biden and G7, but someone is very much against uh, to G7's behavior. So uh, press, 
and media need to or inform of the fact to the both side it is very important and people consider by themselves what is real and what is fit for them. The third is uh, objectively uh, ascertain the changing international situation and the focus on trends of the global south. Two thirds of the world now uh, wants to cease fire and end to the killing in Ukraine. It is a global south people. These people are 50 countries that disagreed with the UN uh, condemnation of Russia and its withdrawal account of two thirds of the world population. It is an emerging nation called the Global South and the countries that will take the lead of the second half of the 21st century. So uh, about 30 years later, uh, it is a Global South era. The era when only the G7 decide that the direction of the international country is over. We must also listen to the opinion of emerging country that are friendly to China, India, Russia, or the third world. Fourth is the elimination of nuclear threats. In March, the UK agreed to supply the Ukrainian with uh, depleted uranium ammunition, which pieces tank and uh, spreads radiation. Depleted uranium ammunition was used in the US and Britain, in the Gulf War and Iraq, and is still a problem of malformation in children and Expo, exp, <laughs> exposure of people and soil. It was also used to the Bosnian and Kosovo conflicts, and when an Italian soldiers were exposed to DUA, the EU got very angry and said, are you going to use in a, uh, DP, DUA in Europe? And the United States apologized. So Western Europe is trying to use weapon uh, to mass destruction and poisonous uh, substances, which are prohibited by international law, but they use in Eastern, Eastern Ukraine. So they think uh, Eastern Ukraine is not Europe. It is very much um, discrimination, I think. This is a problem that they must never be tolerated at the summit in Hiroshima, the city of the atomic bomb, aiming for the world without nuclear weapon. There is also the danger of nuclear war if Russia use tactical nuclear weapons. Depleted uranium ammunition may also be used in East Asia as well if in Ukraine uh, will be used. Although prohibited in white areas, it is also a discriminatory weapon that has been used against colored people like Asia as well. The G7 must not allow this. So what should Japan do looking to the future? Hiroshima uh, historic uh, historical uh, drastic changes are happening in uh, contemporary world. By 2100, the next 75 years later, Asia and Africa will um, account for 80% of the world population, while United States and Europe will account for less than 10%. Do you believe about that? The Western era is coming to an end before the next generation comes. Here is very uh, young people here, so perhaps in your age is a new age, not a Western age, but a Asian and African age, I think. According to the famous Angus Madison economic statistics, complied by the um, 
mega computers, China and India accounted for half of the world economy from AD 0 to AD uh, 1820. So uh, 18,000, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 18th century uh, China and India is the top of the world. The era of Europe and the United States is only 200 years. China will overtake the U.S. in 10 years, and India will overtake the U.S. in 30 years later. The rapid militarization of the U.S. and Europe seems to be a threat and counter of the growth of China, India, and uh, BRICS countries. Why can't we, can we uh, develop together uh, G7 and Global South peacefully? Goldman Sachs GDP figure are even more uh, startling. In 2075, five, uh, 50 years later, China and India occupy first and the second place, uh, followed by US, in the third place, followed by Indonesia, uh, Nigeria, Pakistan, Egypt, Brazil, and uh, these are the top eight. And Japan falls to 12th place. In 40 years, Japan working population will be halved, will be 50%, and the remaining 40% will over 65 years old. Japan is aging society. Given this, Japan should choose a path of peace and stability and prosperity by linking China, India, ASEAN. They are the largest trade partners uh, rather than against China as an enemy and deploying missile. Encouraging Ukraine to go to war means please fight against Russia and die for nations. It is Curious, don't say that at uh, the Hiroshima summit. I'd like to uh, say the leaders of the Ukrainian uh, United States and Europe who had gathered at the G7 summit to declare the ceasefire in the Russo Ukrainian war and a proposal for the world without nuclear weapon at the Hiroshima G7 summit in order to eliminate further casualty, Japan, in cooperation with the United Nations, will go in the utmost to achieve the ceasefire and peace. And just post-war peace treaty and the development of the world, Japan should act as a bridge between G7 and G20. Thank you very much. ちょっと。はい、えっと、え、その報道の方々にぜひお願いしたいことはできるだけその色々なあの知識、その様々な多様な知識をあの、え、一般の方々に与えてあげればやはり彼ら自身も現在のところではこの
で、えー、と一応その G7 サミットに向けて言いたいこととして簡単に4つを挙げましたであの私は広島の被爆者2世なんですけどであの、えー、と朝日生テレビでは長崎の被爆者3世の方もいらっしゃいますけど<笑>共に核なき世界を広島サミットで訴えようということであの合意しました広島と長崎は唯一その市民の上にえっ、ー、と原子爆弾が落とされそしてそれに対してアメリカはまだ一度も謝罪していないと、えー、戦勝国であったがゆえにあの謝罪に至ってないというような問題もあります広島サミットではぜひ G7 によって核なき世界、えー、核廃絶に向けてのアピールを出していただければというふうに思っています、えー、まあもう一つはそのグローバルサウスです、えーまあはい、グローバルサウスが今、えー、と人口では世界の3分の2そしてあと50年もすれば8割を占めるような状況にあってで彼らが今経済的にも IT でも急速に成長している中でいかにあごめんなさい森本敏郎ではなくて森本聡さんでした失礼いたしました。はいあの元防衛大臣ですはいありがとうございますあの訂正させていただきますで、えー、まあグローバルサウスのあの意見はとにかくそのまあ経済制裁の問題もあり基金の問題もあり、えー、いかにこれを止めていくかということが非常に重要だっていうことをあの主張していますそれにも耳を傾けるべきでしょうそれから最後に今、えー、イギリスがあのリピーティッドウラニウムアミニション、えー、っと劣化ウラン弾を、えー、ウクライナで使おうとしています劣化ウラン弾はアメリカと、えー、イギリスによって、えー、イラク戦争とそれからアフガニスタンと、えー、ボスニア・コソボで使われてそしてボスニア・コソボで使われた時にイタリアの兵士が被爆することで EU が非常に怒ってあのヨーロッパであのウラニウムを使うのか、劣化ウラン弾を使うのかということで、えー、あのアメリカを批判したら、アメリカはそれに対して謝ったんですね、欧州では使わないと。<笑>にもかかわらず、今回、ウクライナ戦争でイギリスが使おうとしているということは、ウクライナ東部は欧州ではないのか、でまたもしウクライナ東部で使おうとすると、今後、台湾有事とか。東アジアで問題が起こったときに東アジアでも使われる可能性があるつまり劣化ウラン弾というのはホワイトには使わないけれどもカラードには使うんだという非常にこう差別的なあの区別が今なされようとしているのではないかということでこれは広島サミットでは絶対に許してはならないことだと思うので広島では核なき世界と劣化ウラン弾を使わない。西側にも使わせないということを宣言していただきたいというふうに思っていますそして日本はそうした中で G7 と G20 を結ぶグローバルサウスと先進国を結ぶ役割こそアジアの一員であり広島で開かれるサミットとして重要なのではないかということを強調したいと思います以上ですありがとうございました Thank you for Professor Emeritus Habak Miko. Just short, brief Japanese translation. So, is there any question from the press?、Okay. Please. Hi.、Hey. Uh, Mike. Ah, okay, sure. I'll speak English then.、Uh, I speak Japanese. My other language is、uh, Japanese, but I speak English.、Uh, thank you very much.、Uh, my name is Kantaro Suzuki. I'm a regular member here and a former、uh, board member of FCCJ. And、uh, I would like to ask、uh, two questions.、Uh, first question is、uh, in your statement in English and Japanese, in the both,、uh, you mentioned the、uh, UN and Turkey and China and India. and、uh, But you don't mention the friends.、Uh, but I recognize that uh, the, the President Macron is uh, trying to, uh, at least uh, trying to persuade them. So I, I was uh, wondering uh, what's your opinion about uh, his uh, movement and uh, 
how do you evaluate uh, his leaderships? And then my second uh, question is, uh, it's uh, actually the, the, the Dr. Hage, Haba already uh, mentioned this, but I want to, uh, you to clarify this, that uh, uh, also Mr. Isezaki said that uh, uh, it took a time to, 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 to f war the ceasefire became a very f uh, popular in Japan. Uh, finally, that's what he said, uh, quote. Uh, and uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. 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 Haba said that uh, uh, what about the, the one-sided uh, the media's report in Japan? So, uh, why, why do you think it happened like this in, in Japan? And why? What's the reason behind this? Like we became like this, and I was, I was why, why people, you know, it, it took so, 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 so long time that this ceasefire's mentality, you know, became at least popular here. So I just, I just want to know why it just it took so many, you know, months and almost more than years. So, thank you. Professor Emeritus Hapa, Kumiko. No, <laughs> I already spoke about the Macron very much. Uh, one years before, uh, when uh, there is an uh, election, uh, presidential election in France, I very much concentrated the uh, Macron's consideration, and Macron was already <coughs> uh, called, uh, visited and uh, discussed with the Putin uh, 15 times. Um, before uh, these uh, uh, ceasefire speaking. So that's why um, I always concentrate the Macron as well. But today I didn't speak about the Macron. Sorry, uh, I missed to say. But uh, generally uh, I said uh, Turkey, Erdogan, uh, France, Macron, and Indian Modi, and uh, China, uh, Xi Jinping, and so on. So Macron is also very much important role to uh, speak ceasefire and when he visited to China and speak with the Xi Jinping he said uh, France will not uh, obey to the United States is a very more, uh, it's a very uh, important uh, opinion perhaps the Japanese president uh, in, uh, the Japanese prime minister cannot speak about that Yes, and the second one is also the similar thing. So uh, the Macron and France has a de Gaulle, uh, <laughs> Gaulism, yes, a tradition of Gaulism. Uh, they are very much independent, and India and China also very independent, not obey to the United States. But uh, Japan is perhaps very strong pressure from the US. And I visited many uh, countries in this uh, January, fe February, March, and so on. Many countries, uh, people already spoke, Japan is under the US affection, uh, US um, influence. So Japanese government or Japanese people as well are uh, impossible to say their own opinions. So seeing from the outside, Japan looking like a uh, uh, US uh, pupil, like so on. And not, uh, nowadays, it is a little um, problematic. I said uh, media and the press also uh, a little considering about the Japanese government and the United States as well. So. Um, comparing like BBC or other uh, European uh, media, um, Japanese uh, press or media cannot uh, uh, show the Russian opinion or a Chinese opinion or other uh, global South opinion. So that's why if they are uh, uh, Japanese citizens very much uh, mm, Concentrating the NHK uh, news or uh, Asahi Shimpun newspaper, most of the people can believe ceasefire is not so good thing because uh, Russia will be uh, married by the ceasefire. 
but uh, yes, it is interesting. I already said in a, uh, I visited to the United States and to the Canada or uh, India. All of the people are very much um, independent. They have their own opinion. And there is many facts uh, in this uh, war or in the international relations, but uh, only in Japanese media, it is very much limited to inform to the citizens uh, the facts. So that's why uh, we also consider to introduce uh, many facts, uh, not only one side, but also several sides. Uh, opinion is very important to Japanese people become democratic. We need to learn democracy in this war time. Is it okay? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there any question? Other question, please. Um, uh, thank you for uh, uh, yeah, speech. And uh, I have uh, four questions. And uh, I uh, make it short, very quickly. Yeah. Um, one point. Uh, why don't you call on uh, China and uh, India to sanction Russia? Isn't it uh, important to prevent Russia from uh, continuing uh, war? That's it. Uh, first question. China to India, Russia, no, ケザイセイサイを求めないのはなぜなのかと。え、ロシアの戦争継続を阻止することが大事なんじゃないかというふうに思うんですが、いかがでしょうというのがまず一つ。え、セカンド uh, question. Um, don't send weapons. Ah, that's fine. Uh, what do you think about uh, Iran and uh, North Korea sending uh, weapons to uh, Russia? Also, uh, what about uh, Russia has sent uh, weapons to pro-Russian uh, militants since uh, 2014? え、とですね。ま、武器を送るなって。ま、それは、え、日本の立場としては、ま、そういう言い方もあるでしょう。え、特にあの、劣化ウラン弾に関してはね。え、そこは、ま、いいんですけど、じゃあ、そのイランのロ
えー、まあそのグローバルサウスの,あの国々というのをねどうこうっていうのは最近注目されてますけど、えー、国連決議でロシ,ロシアに対するその、えー、避難決議というのはもうほとんどの国があの、えー、賛成してて、まあそのえー、例えばその棄権してる国々もあのいっぱいありますけども少なくともロシア側に立ってるわけではないわけですよね。えー、ですから、お話聞いてるとなんかグローバルサウスがロシア側みたいな話のように聞こえますけどそれはちょっと事実と違うのではないかということです。はい、雑音すみません、えー、これはあのもう日本語でさせていただきますね。<笑>えー、それで、えー、石破さんとの論争点ですから。<笑>えーまなぜそのおおこの制裁をかけていないのかという問題ですけどでまああのそれからもう今の話で他の論点も出されましたけど結局戦争をお戦争というものを続けていってそして望む目的を得るかっていう問題とですねそういうふうに考えていく考え方それはあの一番望んでいるのはウクライナだと思いますけどウクライナが望んでいる生き方だと思います勝利を得てロシアを完全に追い出すとクリミアまで取り戻すとこれですな。そういうことですけど、そういう生き方を取るか、もう一つは、うん、あ戦争というものを直しやめるような方向に,に進めていくべきだ、言ってほしい、そういうふうに要求するかで、そうした場合に、戦争を今やめると、ロシアが占領しているというところから、ロシアを追い出すことができないということですね。そういう問題があるこういうことですけどこれはですからど私は二つの立場というものはどちらかが絶対だというものではないというふうに私は思いますですから現在の状況の中で停、えー、戦を望むとこれ以上人が死んで、えー、破壊が進むということをストップさせたいとこういうふうに思うという気持ちとですねこれ真実の気持ちですでこれが即時停戦をということになりますで。もう一方の私は制御を実現すると、制御を実現するまで戦うんだと、こういうお立場ですな、そういう侵略者のロシアを追い出し、やっつけるということにしししすべきだと、ウクライナの人たちが望んでいることであるでしょう。で、二つの立場があるということですよ。でこれをめぐって世界はいろいろ揺れていると私は思います。ですから、えー、欧米は欧米はアメリカを先頭にして、えー、ウクライナを助けるということでやってきていますけどどこまでやれるかどうかということについて非常に不安があるということですから一番アメリカがどこで戦争をやめるかということについて、えー、考えていて、えー、はっきりしたことが出てない。つまりウクライナのゼレンスキー大統領が出した実項目の平和提案ですね、平和フォーミュラというものを、アメリカは正式には承認していないと私は思います。EU は承認しました、確かにですね。で日本政府も承認しています。しかし、アメリカ政府ははっきりこれは承認していないということです。迷っているということですよ。ですから、ウクライナが勝利するためには兵器,兵器を与えて続けていかなきゃならないと、そしてロシアに対して戦うように、さらに勝利させるにはもっと兵器を与えていかなきゃならない、そう,そうした場合に戦争が拡大するということについて恐れるということがありますから、ですから、2つの立場を選ぶについて、動揺しているというような状況じゃないかと思いますよ。アメリカのみならずフランスも同様ですねドイツだってレオパルト戦車を出してはいるけども、やっぱり動揺しているロシアの中、ドイツの中でも非常に強い反対運動がありますからですね、ですから、どちらが正しいというようなふうに考えることは
できない2つの意見というものがあるとそしてこの立場我々の立場という我々の今出しているのは即時停戦というのを求めるという立場ですけれどもそれが問題をはらむということはそれも認めますよそう,そういった場合ですねしかしロシアのによる不正意なことが行われたとしても戦争はやっぱりやめるべきだとや,やめた上でそれから先さらに状況を改善するための努力を国際社会が続けていくと停戦の上に進めていくべきだというのは我々の考え方ですですから、えー、2つの考え違う考え方にとって、えー、出てくるわけであなたがあロシアに兵器を出している方を抑えるべきだというふうに、えーえー、言われるのもそれはその立場としては分かりますけれどもしかしそれは人々の選択の問題だと私は思いますつまり我々は武器を持って戦っている人間じゃないからですねウクライナの戦,戦争の中でそういう立場でねウクライナの戦争の外にいる人間がどういう考えるかというと今のように私たちのように考える立場で来ると私の地域に戦争が来てほしくないとロシアをロシアを向き任すためにはむしろ東アジアの方向からロシアに軍的圧力をかけるっていうことが意味があるということにもなるわけですそういうふうな考え方は私は取らないウクライナの戦争というのは早くやめてもらいたいそれで我々のところに戦争が起こることはやめてほしいと。これ利己主義だというふうにご指摘になるかもしれませんがしかし我々は我々にここに生きている人間として我々が望んでいることを言っているわけですですから一般的な正義の立場として問題を出しているというよりは我々は我々の考えること要求としてそういうことを出しているということになりますね。十分お答えになってないかもしれませんけど。まあ、これぐらいです。九十、はい。プロフェッサーエメリタスワダハルキ、九十。ダイジェスト、イン、イングリッシュ。ですか。いや。カインドアンサー。トゥ、トゥ、トゥ、アティチュード。トゥ、アティチュード。トゥ、ウォーズ、グレニアンウォー。ワン、アティチュードイズ。イズ。アワーアティチュード。イミデイツシスパイア。ノーモアキリング、ノーモアダイングですね。そういう立場ですね。で、もう一つの立場は、アザー、アザー、アザーティューディース、アザーティューディース、キープファイティング、キープファイティング。トゥーザイエンド、ビクトリアスエンドですね。そういう、そういう考え方。で、これは一番、セカンドバーチューボーズ、リプレゼンドバイ、ウクライナン、ガバメント、プレ,プレジェンド、ゼレンスキー。ゼレンスキーですで、私、トゥーアティチュード、ああ、ベースオン・ザ・ウィッシュス・エンド・ウィッシュス・デマンズ・オブ・トゥー・ピープル・トゥー・ピープルス。So, I, I wouldn't like to say that、uh, our attitude is on the uh, 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 is uh, just、uh, for every people.、Uh, but, We, say, we are saying that we wish、uh, 
tourism. Uh, Ukrainian war, as an, as an outsider, outsider, uh, and who wish to to uh, to we to wish uh, outside who, who wished wish uh, own own peace yeah. so uh, this, this, uh, and there is no just no 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 Final way. Yeah. <laughs> Final uh, way out of uh, uh, this war. Yeah. May I say? Thank you very much, Professor Mitas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, about four questions, uh, I'd like to uh, speak very shortly, but uh, I'm sorry, I need to say your thinking is very um, simple. Uh, I, I, my opinion is not there is a divide two side, but there is a variety, diversity in international relations. For example, in Ukraine inside, there is a supporting a, uh, Zelensky or against Zelensky also uh, collaborate uh, inside. In the United States also, I said, uh, someone support Biden and someone against Biden. In Japan also, you support the Ukrainian and we are uh, supporting peace. So there is many um, consideration in the international relations. I always said to you, you need to know many facts, many sides. Uh, you only consider in a one side. That is a problem, I think. At first, the economic sanction. Economic sanction is very, very complicated. Economic sanction wanted to press, oppress the, um, Russia, but uh, economic sanction didn't oppress Russia uh, completely. Russia is, Russian economy is working very well, and uh, uh, suffering people, uh, allied people, uh, European people, uh, Germany, uh, UK, and other countries, and Japan as well, who are uh, succeeding, the United States. United States using shale gas uh, to stop the uh, Russian oil and gas. So it is very clear <laughs> the economic sanction um, uh, merit is going to the United States and demerit going to the allied country, Japan and the uh, European Union. That's why now the Germany, uh, France, and other countries are against to the uh, economic sanctions. Sometimes are people, uh, not a government, and the global South also very much suffering about the economic sanction. Uh, that's why we need to consider uh, stop the economic sanction because it is only the merit to the United States. The second, the uh, about the uh, stop the war and uh, to uh, stop the uh, arms. Um, we do not support Russia. <laughs> we are saying to making a peace, prosperity, and development. So we against the Russian uh, oppressing the uh, Ukrainian people and uh, the United States and uh, NATO will send the army to the um, uh, arms to the, yes, uh, arms to the uh, Ukraine. And because why we are against the uh, arms? Because using that arms, Ukrainian people and Russian people are killing, dying, and suffering. So uh, the sending the arms is to killing the Ukrainian people, 
it is very contradictory thing. You are not supporting Ukrainian people. You are killing uh, not directly, but uh, to killing the Ukrainian people. So uh, that's why we are supporting peace and prosperity. The third, the uh, occupation. Um, about the uh, ceasefire and to make a buffer zone, um, last time uh, Professor Wada uh, spoke about the uh, Korean War. After the Korean War, until now, there is a buffer zone <laughs> and uh, didn't uh, completely uh, solute, uh, solved about the uh, border question. Border question is also very much complicated. Uh, it is there some game. One part take the border, uh, the other are suffering against that, and the new war starting. And uh, the, the other side, B, get the uh, border, um, A is very much suffering about that and continue the uh, war. So the border question is always um, continuing the war and uh, it is no solution. So that's why about the Senkaku Island as well, uh, Chinese people said the uh, frozen, frozen the border is the most good, uh, best uh, solution. And especially, I'm researching the European Union. A European Union decided in the Helsinki Accord, we will stop the border, frozen the border. It is the most important thing to making peace. And after that, uh, in the uh, European Union, until now, uh, 78 years, uh, there is no war after the Second World War. So the frozen border is the most important solution. That's why ceasefire and occupation of buffer zone is very important. Fourth is a global south. Uh, please count down our 50 uh, countries' abusion, uh, abolition and uh, against uh, decision. You said 141 people, uh, countries, are uh, supported against uh, Russian uh, invasion. Uh, but uh, other 50 countries are something like uh, ab abusion or um, against. And these 50 countries, you count the population, it is uh, two third. <laughs> so, so many uh, people living in the global South country. Some of the global uh, South country, of course, you said they support the United States because they can get the money or they have strong connection with the economy or politics. But uh, we count 50 countries not to join to the 141. Uh, these countries are global South and now two third and in the future 80 percent of the world population. We need to consider these things, uh, these people. Generally, we are very much discriminated. Um, uh, in the uh, Asahi Nama Terebi, Morimoto-san also said Global South is a, a developing country. Uh, poverty, and they didn't uh, develop. But in a, a situation, uh, we can see the real um, uh, statistics, and I show the uh, uh, Goldman Sachs uh, future uh, economic uh, um, uh, statistics. They will be the developed country in 50 years later. They are higher than Germany, Japan, and the United States as well. So we need to carefully consider about the G, uh, global South country. Please count down about the 50 countries' uh, population. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is a time, so we have to leave this room. Sorry. Uh, I think uh, there is a... There no, is please, uh, please. one, one uh, uh, misunderstanding. What's yeah. the big Do you want to question? Question?
I'm I'm sorry. It's too <laughs> after two. Uh, I just uh, I just say um, uh, you know uh, there are not the only two uh, ways. Uh, I have a friend in Ukraine, and uh, I would be sad if he died uh, as a soldier. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's why I asking you, uh, China and India, to impose the sanction on Russia. Uh, that uh, would make a sanction uh, against uh, Russia more effective. Thank you. Uh, another question. Hello. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it's not a question, but uh, could we have uh, some comments from Mr. Okamoto or Mr. Suzuki? I mean, in Japanese or in English, but either because they're, you know, they're here. So it's 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 great if you can hear something from him too. Thank you. Okay, just brief comment, please. In Japanese. In Japanese. Okay. After translation, we put on. Comment. I will make. But, ah, this is a repetition. But, ah, this is a repetition. 和平、あるいは停戦と講和っていうのは違うものだということです。で、これは声明の中にも書かれていますし、繰り返し、あの和田さんも、幅さ,さんも、伊勢崎さんも言ってますけれども、やっぱり、停戦というのは、今、その場で銃をそれぞれが置く、それがシーズファイヤーということであります。で、えっと、それをより公正な、あるいはより正義の、えー、和平に向かって交渉をしなきゃいけないというのが、我々の立場であります。で、えー、とその例としては、朝鮮半島でね、えー、ともう今年、えー、停戦になったから 70, 70年経ちます、ちょうど70年です。つまり、停戦はなされているけれども、公はなされていない、平和条約が結ばれていないという状況です。から日本とロシアの間も、えー、78年間間もですかねえー、停戦にはなってますけれども、平和条約は結ばれていないので、まだ、えっと、和平になっていないということです。しかし、この,この間、私たちとしては、停戦であることの方がですね、えそれはあの民族主義的なあれからすればですね、えー、主権の問題なの,なのだから、これは戦争をもっても、えー、取り返さなきゃいけないという立場もあるでしょうけれども、この間、えっと、停戦をずっと続けたことで、朝鮮半島もあるいは、えー、その時生まれてもう70で人生が終わるぐらいの間あの停戦平和が保たれたということは私はとても素晴らしいことであるし良かったというふうに思っておりますでそういう意味で停戦をしてその,その次はですねやっぱりやっぱりウクライナの人とからロシアの人が対話し交渉し、えー、そこに国際社会がですねえっ、ー、と役割を果たすことによって、より正しい、より国際法と国連憲章に基づいた和平に近づけていくという努力をするということが大事だということであります。大体、私のコメントとしてはそういうことです。はい、ありがとうございます。あの和田先生も言われてましたように、あの2つの立場がある。私は2つの立場が言い続けることが大事だなというふうに思ってるんですね。ロシアはけしからんこれは言い続けるで、えー、しかしテーブルに早くつけというこれも言い続けるでそうすることがあの早く、まあ、あのテーブルにつくためのフォースとしてあの働くんじゃないかなと思ってますでテーブルにつけという声があのまだまだ小さいあの私たちの主張がなかなかあの広まっていないということが私たちの努力不足だと思うんですけれども、えー、これを広げていくことが大事だろうなというふうに思ってます Thank you very much. So, thank you for coming. This is the end of the press conference. Thank you. 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 Thank you.